love with my Savior, and He's in love with me. He is with me from day to day, what a friend is He. Watches over me while I sleep, hears me when I pray. I am happy as I can be. Ten, if you take your Bibles and turn with me, I'm going to challenge you to read the book of Job in your own Bible time, your own Bible study time, read the book of Job. And keep in mind, it's a dialogue. As I said this morning, Job is having a conversation with his friends. And keep that in mind because when you go from chapter to chapter, one man's talking, then the other man's talking, and that kind of thing. And so tonight is Job chapter 10. And there's an expression in Job chapter 10 that really helped me as Job chapter number uh, 6 did and 7 and 8 and all the other chapters. But chapter 6, especially when he said arguing, is there's no, no reproof in arguing. But when I get to chapter 10, there's an expression that I very, found very, very helpful. And I hope it'll help you tonight as we look at it. Job chapter 10 and verse number 1. The Bible says, my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Doth thou condemn me? Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. It is good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked. There's a question there. Verse 4. Hast thou eyes of flesh? Or seest thou as a man? Are thy days as the days of man? Are thy years as a man's years? That thou inquirest after my iniquity and searchest after my sin? He's asking these questions. He's talking to the Lord. He's making his complaint. Jump down with him verse 14. He says, If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me. For mine iniquity. Verse 15. But if I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. Verse 15. Here's the text. Here's the title. I am full of confusion. Therefore, see thou mine affliction. And man, when I got to that verse, I thought, man, honestly, life has a lot of confusing times. Now we understand and believe that God is not the author of confusion. We, he tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not the author of confusion. We know that. We know God is not the author of confusion. We know God does not create confusion for us. And if you're ever confused about something, that is of not of God. But there are times, honestly, there are times in my mind that I'm perplexed and I, I find myself confused about certain things. I'm confused about how this worked out or how this did not work out or how this happened or how this did not happen. And so in my physical mind, in my fleshly mind, there's confusing, confusing times. Job said that. Job said, if I do wicked, I'll be judged. But if I do right, I'll have that reward. What's to do? And it often seems like you and I find, I find myself in that situation sometimes. Man, I, I'm, I'm doing right. I, I seem to be doing right. I, I think I'm doing right. I, I want to do right. I, I find myself trying to do right, but this happens. Like, I'm, I'm confused. If I do this, if I do A, then B should happen. If I do C, then D should happen. And you think it ought to all fall into place. But I will remind you that God's thoughts are not your thoughts. And God's ways are not your ways. And He does not think as a man. He does not walk as a man. He does not talk as a man. The Bible says we should not trust. He does not trust in the legs of a man. 
And a lot of times when we're confused, I think it's so true because we have a misconception about confusion. Don't miss this because a lot of times we think because we are confused that God is confused. Because we think in our fleshly mind, we think in our little infinite mind, we find in this little, the little mind we have, fleshly mind, we think, well, this didn't work out. And for some reason, we associate that with God like, oh, he must be confused. And I remind you again, Isaiah said that he is not like a man. He doesn't think like a man. He doesn't talk like a man. He doesn't behave like a man. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, uh, live his uh, existence like a man. But Job says these same words again. He says, I am full of confusion. We find also in 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So I want you to be reminded of this message because there's going to be times, if not in the past, if not in the present, it will be in the future. There's, there's going to be times of confusion. There's going to be times that it did not work out like you thought it was going to work out. It's not unfolded like you thought it was going to unfold. And the devil, one of his wiles, one of his huge elements that he uses against you is confusion. He loves confusion. He loves to cause confusion. He loves to create confusion. And you'll find, we'll see here in just a few minutes in the book of Acts, that the whole city was given to confusion and chaotic behavior and chaotic display of, of things just going disarrayed. And Job said, I feel that way. And, I, and I'll remind you here that Job is a believer. Job would be a Christian. Job is somebody that's following God and it's skewed evil and doing right and he's lost everything. And, and, and I always have to keep in my mind when I read the book of Job, Job had no idea that all this was going on. See, we read the book of Job, so you and I have an advantage. We have the advantage of reading the book of Job about the life of Job. But Job didn't have the book. Job did not have the story that I'm reading to you tonight after the book of Job because he even said, I get a little chuckle, when he said, I wish God had wrote my words down in the book. He had no idea that's exactly what God was doing. <laughs> and I can't help but think sometimes, and I can't prove this from the Scripture because the Bible doesn't say, but I do know this, we have a God that's so personal that He might be writing a book about your life. He may be just writing down the scenarios that's going on in your life so He might could use them somewhere somehow. I believe He is. I believe there's no accidents with God. I, I believe things that's going on in our life, I believe things that happens to us, I believe the things that God brings in our life, He wants to use. Absolutely. God's no, there's no accidents with God. When I think about the sound mind, when I think I study the book of 2 Timothy and I think about this sound mind, then really the sound mind just really means to think with reason and understanding. As we know and as you know, the battleground of Satan is the mind. He's going to attack your mind. He might attack your body. But he's going to attack your mind. If you'll study the book of Job, you'll find he touched him physically. He touched him with his monetary things. But if you study these verses, you study these chapters, there is a battle in Job's mind. That's what this verse is. He said, I'm confused. That confusion is the battle of the mind. That confusion is, he's saying, I think God's doing this, but it looks like Satan's doing this, and there's confusion there. Confusion is always, notice this, you ought to write this somewhere down. Write this down somewhere. Confusion is always flavored with fear. Because when I get fearful, confusion sets in. The Bible says that He has given us a plain path. So if God has given us a plain path to walk and we're confused, where does that come from? It comes from Satan. Because God didn't give us confusion. God doesn't give us a confused path. And so the devil always uses confusion to bring fear because fear will cause you to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Years ago, I worked with a guy, y'all have heard me talk about Houston Scales. And Houston was absolutely notorious for everybody that knew Houston. They, he was scared of his own shadow. Honestly, I, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. You, you, you could, he could be standing there and you could walk around behind him and, and, and boo, he'd nearly jump out of the skin. 
And we used to kid him about why he was so fearful. And I said, Houston, why are you scared? Why does everything scare you? Why, have you, why are you so fearful? And he said, I, when I grew up as a boy, he said, my parents convinced us that the boogeyman was outside. And he's 72 years old. He said, when I, I was convinced when I was growing up that they, there was a boogeyman outside, and if I went out, he'd get me. And he said, honestly, he said, I still have that fear today. I have a fear of the dark. I have a fear uh, of something getting me on the outside. And the 72-year-old man had that fear. And I thought, that's just the devil. That's what he does. He, he runs our life with fear. He runs our life with, 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 with destruction and chaos and confusion. And God says, that's not of me. Job said, I'm full of confusion. Notice this. Here's what he did. Here's how he linked his confusion with his affliction. Here's what he said. He said, I am full of confusion, semicolon. Then he says, therefore, see thou mine affliction. Job battled this. Here Job was in his sackcloth and ashes. Here Job was with looking at the cemetery of his children. Here, here Job was probably still in the, 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 the heaps and the ashes of his ruin. He's still saying that my affliction, I'm confused. That's of the devil. 1 John 4, 18, the Bible says, Fear hath torment. That's the reason fear is not of the Lord. Fear is not of a sound mind. Psalm 71, 1, the Bible says, O oh Lord, do I put my trust? Let me never be put to confusion. I'll just say it here, say it now. If you're confused about something, that's not of God. Now, I will say this. There are times that God's going to try you and going to test you to see if you're going to follow Him. And there will be times of faith. There will be times of stepping out. There will be times uh, of some uncertainty, no doubt. There will be times when you're not 100% sure, but they'll not be confusing to it. God's not going to do that. God's not going to work through confusion. You study the New Testament, you'll find in the days of Pentecost that when the Holy Ghost came down and, and filled those men, they all said, oh, they're drunk with wine. They're confused. They're all speaking in these other languages. And the Bible says it was the hearing that they heard was profound, not the speaking. So man, try, uh, God, the devil tried to use confusion for man, and God says, no, it's not confusion. Notice verse number 16 of that same text. He says, see thou mine affliction, verse 16, for it increaseth. You ever notice when you're confused about something, you don't, you're not settled on a certain circumstance and you're confused, it just always seems to get bigger. It just always seems to grow. It's always a bigger deal when you're confused. If I'm of a sound mind, if I've got everything lined out, I'm trusting the Lord, I'm gonna, we're, we're, we've got peace about this, we've got, we've got direction about this, it does seem like it's not a big deal. But all of a sudden when the Satan pitches you something and it seems to be confusing, it seems to be huge, it seems to be devastating, it seems to grow and get bigger. Hebrews 6, 19, the Bible says, as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. I'm going to tell you something. God is a God of anchor. God is a God of steadfastness. God is a God of surety. One man said, confusion makes you weary. That's true, isn't it? <coughs> Confusion makes you weary. Notice as he said in verse 17, Thou renewest thy witnesses against me and increaseth thine indignation. When you're confused or when you're disarrayed, it seems like everybody's against you. You know the Bible says, The wicked flee when no man pursues him. You ever notice how when you think you've got it bad, everybody's against you? You think sometimes when you've got a bad deal or you're having a bad day, you think everybody else thinks you're having a bad day. I mean, it's such a psychological thing. It's such a, it, I, I, this, this, this sort of, it sort of I, I, I want to be cautious here because I don't want to make, offend anybody in this situation, but it, it often seems when somebody has gotten out of church, and they've quit a few services, and they've been a few weeks, and they've not come. They're like, oh, I don't want to come back. I was like, why? why? Why are you quit church? Why are you quit? Why are you quit coming? Well, it's what people think about me. And I want to say, I'd hate to hurt your feelings, but they don't even know you're gone. 
But in our mind, we think, oh, I can't go there because they'll judge me because I've been gone for two weeks. They don't even know you're gone. But it increases, and we get this idea that everybody's against us, and everybody's gonna uh, gonna gonna point their fingers. And I want to say to them, Have you ever, seriously, have you ever been to church and somebody come up and push you around because you've been out? No, that's of the devil. <laughs> that is absolutely of the devil. You know what we'll do when you come in? We'll hug you and love on you and say, God bless you for being in God's house. And that's just the devil confusing people. Well, I can't go there because. No, that's right out of the pit of hell. Confusion is right out of the pit, of the bottomless pit, full of confusion. I want to give you this thought, and we'll go home. The pros and cons of confusion. Now, as I study this, and I begin to understand that, I understand that confusion is not of the Lord. We understand that. He, he makes it clear. God's not the God of confusion. But there are times that it seems confusing to us. So my thought was, Lord, what are the pros and what are the cons of confusion? First one, I want to give you, I'm going to give you the con. I'm going to give you the bad part of being confused. Confusion causes, write this down, blindness. Confusion will always cause you to see the immediate. If I'm confused about something or if I've got some kind of confusing activity going, the bad thing about that is, is I can only see just only a small part in front of me. It's sort of like a foggy day driving. When, I, when I've had a confusing day, the only problems I can focus on are mine. I can't help you. Because I'm so consumed in my own confusion. I'm consumed in my own self in this situation. It's sort of like driving down the road in a foggy night. When you've been going down the road in a foggy night and you can only see a few feet in front of you. You can only see a few, maybe just a few hundred feet in front of you. You know, you can't help another driver. You can't help someone in the car with you because you're so consumed with what you cannot see. You're so consumed with what's right out in front of you. You're sort of confused about your surroundings. So you cannot help someone else. Confusion causes blindness. Adversity causes blindness. Of all the adversity that we come across, for some reason we always focus on the bad to the neglect of the good. You've heard me say this many times. We can have a thousand good things happen and have two bad things happen and we forgot all about the thousand and focus on the two. Because confusion causes blindness. Go, go with me to Daniel real fast. Dan, you're right now in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel 9 and verse number 7. Here's what Daniel said. Daniel 9 and verse number 7. He says, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as it this day, to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries, whether thou drivest them, because of their transgression that they have transgressed against thee. God said that Daniel said that we are so confused because we're looking at the face of people. Verse 8, O Lord... To us belongeth confusion of face to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. So it's like a domino effect. You get in a situation you're not sure about. You get in a situation that you don't have peace and contentment about. What you do is you get confused. Then you get blinded by it. Another thing that is bad about confusion is it always causes you to doubt. We write down Acts chapter 19. I'm going to give you a Bible verse of what confusion causes doubt. So it causes blindness and it causes doubt. In Acts chapter 19, here's a confusing setting, if you will. Here's an area of, the, uh, uh, of Ephesus where they're confused. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 29, the Bible says... So Paul's going in, he's preaching to these people at Ephesus, and they've got this Dianus, they've got this, this basically uh, uh, an idol. They, there's this little silver uh, figurine, basically, 
and they're worshiping that thing. They're worshiping it as an idol. And so Paul goes in and he sees that they're worshiping this Dionysus, this little false god. In verse 26, the Bible says, Moreover, we see and hear that not alone in Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods, little g, which are made with hands. So Paul goes in and says, Hey, y'all are confused because y'all are worshiping a little g God. Y'all are worshiping this little Dianus. Y'all are worshiping this little figurine. Verse 27, So that not only... This, our craft is in danger. These men are speaking about it. He said, you're messing up our trade, basically. To be it said it not, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and all the world worshipeth. When they heard these things, sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesus. Verse 30. Paul would have entered into the, under the people, and the disciples suffered him not. Verse 32. Some therefore cried one thing, notice this, and some another. For the assembly was confused. The one part knew not wherefore they would come together, and they drew Alexander of the multitude, and Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with his hand and would have made his defense unto the people, but when they knew he was a Jew, they cried out for two hours. One said this and one said that. Doubt will always be linked to confusion. If you go back to our text in Job chapter number 10, you'll find in verse 15, one of the bad things about confusion, not only it causes blindness, it causes doubt, it causes affliction. We read it. He says, see thou mine affliction. Just as I said this morning, there is no reward for winning an argument. There's no reward for it. We'll talk about that later on, later after church. I said, honestly, have you ever had a trophy for winning an argument? There, there's nothing you can set on your dining room table and say, I won an argument. There's no reward for winning an argument. Same way with confusion. There's blindness. It causes doubt. And it builds on afflictions. He says, see thou mine afflictions. Those are the pros. Those are the cons. So what good is it if we sometimes seem to be confused? I honestly thought to myself, Lord, Lord how, what good is confusion? What what?" What good is it that if sometimes I'm not sure what's going on? Why is that? Go with me to verse 9 of Job chapter number 10. He said, why would it be good if we're confused? I love this. You know what Job said? He said, I'm full of confusion. I don't understand some of this. I don't understand what God's doing, but I do know this. Verse 9. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou hast made me as the clay. You know what I'm reminded of when I'm confused? I'm just a man. You know what I'm reminded of when I realize that I'm confused, that I'm not God? The good thing about being confused is it realizes and I understand that I have a God that sits on the throne that's got it all under control, and I'm not Him. So what's the good thing about being confused? Like Job said, it reminds me that I'm just clay. Now you want to tell people, you know, they think they're all high and mighty and they've got degrees and they've got, got an alphabet behind their name and they think they're somebody because they've got some college degree or they've got some sort of accolades behind their name. I want to say to them, hey, you're just clay too. You don't have it all figured out either. You put your pants on just like everybody else does. You're just a man. Sometimes people get this idea that they've got it all figured out and they've got God by the neck and they've got God by the, uh, you know, by the seat of the pants and they're going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, tell you something, you're just a man. You're just clay. Job said, I, I'm confused and I, I know this is affliction, but I know this. It's reminded me that I'm but dust. 
So the next time confusion comes your way, the next time that you don't seem to have it all figured out, just lift your hand and say, thank God I'm just a man. Thank God I've got a God that's not a man. Thank God that we have a God that sits on the throne that doesn't have to bow down to our thoughts and ideas. What a, what a demeaning, what, a, what an abominable thing when man thinks he can bring God down to the level of a man. And God, I believe God allows some confusion in the hearts and lives of people in the sense of their own doing so they'll remember, I don't have this figured out. Isn't it arrogant? Isn't it, isn't it just absolutely putrefying to get around someone and they think they know it all? Ah. Yeah. They've got it all figured out. They've got all the knowledge. They've got all the understanding. And I want to think if it wasn't for God, you couldn't even breathe. When you think you've got it figured out, just go like that. God allowed that. God allowed you to do that. Job, Job is reminded, I'm full of confusion, but I'm reminded yet that I'm just a man. I'm just clay. I'm, ju I'm just somebody that God has allowed to live. Psalm 39, verse number 4, I read it to you. The Lord, make me, notice this, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days. Here it is, that I may know how frail I am. You don't believe why God lets things happen to us that we don't like, we don't understand, that seem confusing to us. It's because God's reminding us, I'm in control, not you. A lot of times as parents, we allow our children or should allow our children, honestly, to make blunders and failures. Not to say you're promoting that, but look, some of the best things they learn is when they fail. Some of the best lessons we've ever learned as adults, some of the best lessons, lessons we've ever learned as a young people, some of the best lessons we've ever learned is those we've had to fall and get back up. Job said, Lord, teach me to number my days. Teach me that I might remember how frail that I am. He said, verse 5, Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath. Mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best is altogether vanity. So the next time you're confused about something, may God by His Spirit remind us He's letting us know you're just a man. You're just flesh. Get off your high horse. Get off the idea that you've got it all figured out. Get off the idea that you know it all. I think about old Nebuchadnezzar. Boy, what a great story. Old Nebuchadnezzar come out one day and he looked at his kingdom and he thought all what he had made and look at all he had done. And he spread his hands and he thanked all what he had done. And God said, I'm going to make you an ox for a little while. And the Bible says he ate grass like an ox. And his fingernails grew like an eagle's claw. And he walked around on his hands and knees and ate grass like an ox. You know what God was saying? Hey, old boy, I'm in control. It's exactly what happened. Job said, I'm confused, but I'm reminded. The good thing about this confusion is I'm just clay. And here's another one, and we'll go home. Verse 16, back in our text. If we don't recognize it, it will increase, as I said earlier. Verse 16, it will increase. If we find, if you get nothing else, get this. If you find yourself in a confusing setting and you don't stop and recognize the God that allows you to breathe and walk and talk, God will allow that confusion to increase. God will. I, I was talking to another fellow today, but was doing this, doing a project, doing this, and that, and it just, something just, it's just not happening, you know. It's, it's just not coming, it's just not working, it's just not happening, it's just not working, it's just not happening, I and mean, it's going on and on. And he said, the Lord may be trying to tell you something. <laughs> and when you're more confused and more confused and more confused, and I'm still pushing, still pushing, I'm more confused, I'm still pushing, more confused, I'm still pushing. It may be God saying... No. No. So confusion, one of the good things about confusion is it causes us to remember we're just clay, but it also could remember, cause us to remember, stop and ask God. Stop and ask for direction. 
It'd be like you take it somewhere in a car. Thank God for Siri. But just could you imagine we do not have Siri? I go, I take Siri everywhere I go. She tells me where to go and I follow her. I listen to a woman everywhere I go. What about that? But could you imagine going down a road and deliberately going, I'm just keep turning, I'm just turning this way, turning this way, and turning this way, and turning. But you're not going, I'm just keep going. You're going your own way. God says, look, I'm giving you some confusion. Confusion is a red light. Confusion is saying, stop. Seek the Lord. Get back to where you know you're right. One man said, do what you know until you know to do something else. Confusion is a red light. Let confusion be that flashing light. Let confusion cause you to stop and say, I know I'm just a man. This is not of God. So something's not right. There's an alarm going off. There's flags going up. There's things happening. Stop. Job says, I'm full of confusion. And it's increasing, it seems, as the affliction is more and more. And I believe what he's saying is, Stop. And let God do something. So I hope and trust and pray that when confusion comes your way, if you're like Job in scenarios and say, I'm confused, then stop and seek God about it. The more confusion, one man said, the more confusion on our part allows more of our marvelous things to be seen on God's part. So it causes us to remember we're just clay. They will, if it continues to increase, it should cause us to stop and seek God. So the pros and cons of confusion. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this truth.